So hello, everyone. So glad to see you here. Um, today we are going to talk about dolphin whistles. Um, and tell me, how do you pronounce your name? Because I don't want to mispronounce it. It's my, my name is Shadi Akiki. Shadi Akiki, yeah. yes. Because <laughs> um, actually studies this with the help of artificial intelligence, am I right? Mm, sort of. Kind of. Okay, well, we are ready to start. All right. So thank you all for, for attending. Uh, I'm going to be presenting my research on uh, dolphin whistles. So here we go. So let's start first by sound. So how do we measure sound? So there are two main parameters. One of them is how loud a sound is and or how quiet. And one of them is how fast or slow. And when it's fast, I mean something like squeaky violin. And I'm going to demonstrate in a few seconds. And sometimes we say sounds are slow or they like have a very deep hum, like very deep sound like this. So there, so for for loudness, that we measure it with decibels. And so when we say a sound has a higher decibel number, that means it's louder. Like if somebody is shouting, um, then that shout gets a high decibel number. And if somebody's whispering, that's a very low, a quiet sound, then you get a low decibel number. And similar to hot, loud and quiet, you have you know fast and slow, and uh, or or squeaky, like very squeaky sound, like a mouse, or a very deep voice, like a like a car humming. You measure it in hertz. So when it's a very high number in hertz, it's the squeaky mouse sound. So la, 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 you know, very high frequency. And when it's a deep voice, a very deep voice like this, we call this, you know, it's a very low hertz measurement. And so I was thinking if we can just do a very quick exercise now, um, maybe, I don't know, maybe in, in Zoom, if somebody wants to participate to volunteer or how do you do it? Do you do it by raise of hands? How do you do exercise? We can raise hands or, and we can also reply in chat. All right, so all right, so let me see. I let me open the chat. Da, 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 da. So I click here and put where's the chat? The chat, all right, got it. All right, so I suggest we do a small exercise. So we have these four images here at the bottom, and uh, the first one is a child shouting, the next one is two kids whispering. And then we have a violin and a car. So, and I have options uh, right above it, which say high dB, so that's loud, low dB, quiet, high hertz, so squeaky or fast, and low hertz for something that's deep and you know humming like mm, like this. So, what what do you think the first one is? The the child who is shouting. Do you think it's which of these four options do you think it is? Do you think it's high decibels, low decibels, high hertz, or low hertz? So if you want to write in the chat, and we can see who's guessing right. All right, we have high decibels. All right. Anybody else want to guess? All right, so I'm going to time out this question. I'm going to say Aria won this question. So yeah, that's right, high decibels. And I guess Aria will be able to guess the next one quite easily. What do you think it is? All right, we've got Fernood, high decibels. I, I assume you're answering for the first picture. What about the second picture, Fernood? What do you think it is? You think it's high dB or low dB? It's two kids who are whispering with a very quiet voice. What about you, Arya? Do you have any idea what do you think it is? All right, Tashif says, uh, all right. Arya says low dB, Fernand low dB. That's right, that's right. Two questions right in a row. All right, what about the violin? The violin has a squeaky, <laughs> squeaky sound. So what do you think it is? Do you think it's high decibels, low decibels, high hertz or low hertz? All right, Tashif, high, high what? What's, which unit? Fernand says high hertz, yeah. So what I want to say now is the violin, yeah, so it hurts. So the violin 
makes uh, exactly. So Aria is asking if it can be more than one. Yep. So that's exactly what I want to say. So, so a sound has both of these parameters. So we first measure how loud or quiet it is, and then we measure how slow or fast it is. So the violin has high hertz because it's, you know, it's squeaky, but we can also play it in a very quiet sound, very quietly, and that makes it have a very low decibel measurement. Or we can play it very loudly, like, you know, those violin, hard rock violin videos on YouTube, they're very loud, you know, that's high decibels. So the violin has high hertz because it's squeaky, but it can either be high decibels or low decibels. That's very good, Aria. So what about the last one, the car? What do you think it is? So is it high decibels, low decibels, high hertz, low hertz? Are you got high decibels? That's because it's loud. What about the hertz? What do you think, Fernu? Do you think, all right, high decibels, Tashif, all right? All right, Arya says low hertz. So Tashif and Fernu would say it's high decibels, but they didn't say anything about the hertz. And Arya is saying it's low hertz, but she didn't say anything about decibels. So do you all agree that it's high decibels and low hertz? Yes, all right. So the, the car is high decibels and low hertz. So we measure it in both in both parameters. Now I just want to go very quickly back to the first two pictures because we only measured how loud they were. What do you think the first child screaming is in terms of hertz? Do you think it's high hertz or low hertz? It's a child that's screaming. High hertz, yep, yeah, that's high hertz. It's a child screaming. You know what? When you're screaming at home, you're screaming with a loud, with a very high hertz and loud, high decibels voice. That's why, that's why parents find it annoying. It's not just because it's high decibels, not just because it's loud, it's because it's also squeaky. Children have higher frequencies than adults. You know, if I were screaming, you know, I'd be something like, hey, what are you doing? That that's that's high decibels, but it's low frequency, so low hertz. All right, so that was our first exercise. So remember during all this presentation, we measure sound with two units. One is how loud or quiet it is, decibels. And one is how squeaky or deep it is, and that's hertz. So everything is about these two numbers. Remember those very well, decibels and hertz. All right, it'd be scary if children screamed in low hertz. <laughs> yeah, that's how you make horror movies, right? You would make a good Hollywood director. Aria is going to make the next Hollywood movie. All right, so uh, on my next slide, I want to say, ask the question, where is sound? So I'm going to show you a very, an excellent YouTube video. It was, it's by uh, a website called PopSci, Popular Science. And it's a, it's a five to six minute video. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play parts of it and pause and talk about each section because it talks about different kinds of sounds. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna be playing and pausing and talking about different parts. All right, so here in this first part, we're seeing, we're hearing a sound. Do you hear the sound? So yes. it's getting squeakier and squeakier. And while it gets squeakier, this number gets higher. So 12,000, it's going up. 15,000, it's going up. So if you noticed, it was getting squeakier and this is the hertz that was getting higher. So this is an example sound of, you know, going from low hertz to high hertz. And what the video is saying is that children can hear high frequencies like this 15,000 hertz, but for adults, it becomes more and more difficult. So the next frequency, all right, so it's starting again. All right, so this is low frequency, 100 hertz, still low frequency, we're going up. All right, 1,000 hertz, it's becoming squeakier, right? 8,000, still going up, 12,000, all right, so 15,000, this is becoming difficult for older people. All right, so this, the last one, 17,000, is easy for kids to hear, but not for adults. Now, this next one is about decibels, so I'm going to pause here. So, again... So I told you two numbers to measure sound, decibels and hertz. So the first part of this video gave us examples of hertz measurements from low hertz to high hertz. Now we're doing decibels. 
So this is an empty room. This is an empty room, it's 30 decibels. If you're sitting in an empty room, you're hearing at 30 decibels. This is a clock. If you're listening to a watch, it's 45 decibels. Now we have more noise. This is the International Space Station. This is between 51 and 70 decibels. This is considered very noisy and hearing this for a long time will affect your body. Um, that's why I think that's partially why astronauts practice a lot and exercise a lot so that they have very healthy bodies because when they are up in space, they don't need the healthy bodies to go to the beach and show off nice bodies. They need the healthy bodies because it's very difficult conditions up in space, even if they're in the spaceship. They're hearing this noise all the time. It's very, it's, it's a lot of pressure on their bodies. So they have, they need to have very healthy bodies to withstand the, all the noise and all the other different, different difficult conditions. So this is the International Space Station, 51 to 70 decibels. That's very noisy. Imagine How living, is your understanding? Of imagine having to hear that internet, that space station noise while like you're spending days and days and days there. We just heard it for five five seconds and we already felt annoyed. All right, this next one is sixty decibels. This is a conversation between a NASA flight engineer called Jeff Williams aboard the same International Space Station and students in Chicago. This is sixty you know, the decibels. The universe change after seeing it from space. In particular, it has changed about uh, my view of the mathematical order in the universe. The fact that we can fly in space and we can launch in a rocket and rendezvous with the space station is because there is precision in the order in the universe. All right. Now, this next one is a hairdryer. That's 90 decibels. That is super, super noisy. So think. As I've just said, sooner or later, you're going to need a new hairdryer. But with the old ones, you can't get... So this is an advertisement. They're trying to make a joke saying that this new hairdryer is quieter. And this guy's joking, saying you can't hear a thing with the old one. That's how loud the okay. hairdryers are. All right. This is 100 decibels. 100 decibels is wearing headphones and, uh, or earphones and maxing out the volume and hearing, you know, very loud music. This is 100 decibels. This could definitely hurt, hurt your ears. So this is very unhealthy to do. 100 decibels. 140 decibels. We're going up, this is fireworks. So if you're standing and you see fireworks this close and you hear, you hear 140 decibel sounds, this is gonna cause some damage. What's, what's nice about fireworks is that you don't have fireworks all year long, every day, you just have you know, special, special days. So it's probably not gonna damage you to hear some fireworks for five minutes at this distance, but this is how it is, 140 decibels. All right, this is difficult to hear, but do you hear that hum? That's, that, this is 177 decibels. This is very loud, but it's a very low frequency. It's like a hum. This is, this is very, very low frequency. I'm going to play it. All right. This next one is, it's not anymore about decibels and louder. Quiet. Well, first, before we proceed, does anybody have any, any questions? I don't want to be going too fast. Like I'm, like this first section had a lot of stuff. Does anybody have any questions? No, I, I, I think you're doing very good. They, they're asking questions in chat and commenting. Yeah, in I, wasn't, chat. I wasn't looking, all right. So, all right, does it, so I don't see any questions. Is it, if anybody has any questions about the section that passed? All right, I guess not. Well, if, if, if Julia, if you see any questions, don't hesitate to stop me, all right? Sure, sure. All right, so let's go. Oops. All right, I'm gonna forward. Let's go forward. We were, we were somewhere here. All right. All right. So listen to this. All right, 
So this was the first recording, the first human recording of sound. It's a, it's a guy called Edouard Léon Scott de Martinville, and he's recording himself singing with a very, he's singing very slowly a song called Au Claire de la Lune that goes like this. Au Claire de la Lune, mon ami Pierre. It's in French. And he's singing it very slowly. I don't know why he's, he was doing it very slowly. It was 1860. I don't think people spoke slowly in 1860. It's not like we speak faster now. But I think it was because he was testing his device. He was inventing uh, this machine that can record sound. And uh, it had never been done before. So when he's testing, he's trying to be careful. He's trying not to go very fast on the machine. He doesn't want to break it, right? So this is the first recording that we heard. It was done in 1860. Um, it's the first documented recording. So, and what we see, if you look at this picture in behind, this is not just random lines. These lines are the sound itself being written onto a film. So that's how that's how sound got, got recorded back in 1860. It was it was like sound was getting drawn onto onto uh, onto a uh, onto an area. And uh, I'm going to talk about this specific point about how to go from hearing sounds to seeing the sound. Uh, and after after a few slides, just remember that this we're looking at sound now. We're not just hearing it. All right. All right. All right. This is on Mars. This is the sound of wind on Mars. It's wind that's 10 to 15 miles per hour. And this is the sound that uh, we hear. Now this section, now this is interesting. This is about how sound can very directly affect your body. Not just, you know, if I just start screaming now, it's not just so you're gonna get scared, right? But what about sounds that you wouldn't affect, you wouldn't expect to be scary? A lot of people, when they hear the next sound, they have their heartbeats go faster. Some of them have their heartbeats go slower. It depends, different bodies react differently. But it's very interesting that a sound that's so simple that you're gonna hear now, you wouldn't expect it to you know, trigger such a, a huge response in your body, but it does. You hear that sound and you feel you're, you're getting excited. So I'm gonna play the sound and uh, what I want to know is, you know, just write in chat if you felt that your heart was going a little bit faster or slower when you hear this sound. You're, you're not going to die. You're just going to feel like you're a bit excited. So who felt something change with their heartbeats? I'm going to open chat. Did anybody feel heartbeats going faster? Did no, did not, nothing? All right. <laughs> Dina says no, a little, yeah. Something strange, yeah. It's like, you, you can hear that, you can hear that video again later and you'll, you'll feel like, uh, maybe it's your heart. Yeah, slight tingles. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Are you okay, Michael? Pulse drop to zero. Are you okay? You're not okay? You want some water? All right. Okay. All right. So this next section is also. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, all right. He's a vampire. All right, so this next section is also sounds that trigger uh, responses in bodies.
So that was another sound that, uh, you know, triggers responses in, in some bodies differently than others. And some feel their, in their heart, heartbeat drop to zero, some just heart, whose heartbeat goes faster. For me personally, my heart goes faster. I feel a bit excited when I hear those, when I heard those sounds the first time. All right, the next section. Um, the next section is, is about uh, the Navy, US Navy recording a sound that matches with whale sounds, at, but it's at 52 hertz. So normally um, whale sounds, the blue or fin whale have uh, make sounds between 15 and 25 hertz. And this one is 52 hertz. So uh, it was like, they're thinking, okay, what is this? Is it, oh, it's the same, it's the same pattern as whales, but it's different frequency. Is it a, a whale that makes very weird sounds? Is it a different species? We don't know what this is. So this sound in 1992, this was recorded in 1992. We still don't know what this sound is. Um, it might be a whale, it might not be a whale, it might be um, a sea monster, we don't know. Uh, it just follows the same pattern as whale sounds, and, but it's much higher. So whales are 15 to 25, this one is 52. Oops. And in 2010, they heard the same thing again, but we don't, we still don't know what it is. 2010, that's 11 years ago. If you hear that sound uh, while swimming, uh, try to figure that out and let us know what it is. All right, so this is the quietest room in the world. This is negative 13 decibels. Now you're gonna be thinking, mm, Negative, how did, how did decibels become negative? How can you make a sound that's negative? I'm not gonna give you the answer now. I'm gonna let you try to figure that out on your own after the presentation. So how can a decibel measurement, how can it go negative? How can I make a sound that has a negative loudness? Like we said, high, loud sounds have high decibel, quiet sounds have low decibel, but how does it turn negative? Uh, I'm going to let you figure that out. But this is the quietest room uh, on earth. It's negative 13 decibels. Mm, and when you sit inside, you can start hearing your heartbeat. You can even, if you got a soda can, you can hear the bubbles popping. Let's hear it. This is somebody's heartbeat. This isn't mine. All right. This is carbonated water. These are the bubbles in the water popping. That's negative 13 decibels in that room. All right. This next one is similar to the previous sounds. We said that some sounds trigger a, a response in your body. This is called the shepherd scale. And what this does is it goes from very low, from low frequencies to high frequencies. Uh, low frequencies to high frequencies. And it makes some people feel like they're moving. the same sound while uh, Batman was going on his bike. All right, naturally he's got to go through a wall. All right, in this next section, all right, so does, did anybody have any questions so far? All right, I'm gonna assume no questions. All right, in this next section, we're gonna, it's gonna, this video is gonna show us how, when we hear a sound, how can we recreate the same sound with, you know, with using the human mouth and human pronunciation uh, machinery that we have here in our body, in our mouth and our jaws. So like sometimes we say splash. So splash is a word that describes a sound that actually happens in reality. Like if I jump into a pool, it makes a sound. 
the pool doesn't really say splash. It's not like somebody jumps in the pool and hears the pool talking to you saying splash. What you hear is the sound of water, um, you know, making this break in the water while the, uh, the pe person who's jumping breaks in the water. But we try to say what, the, if I ask you, what was that sound? What would you say? You cannot make a pool sound with your mouth unless you're really, really good. But you'd, what you'd probably say is represent that sound with a word. And this is also something that was part of my research in dolphin, dolphin, dolphin whistles. We're going to talk about that later. But so this part is about how people represent sounds using a word that sounds kind of like it, but it uses letters and you know things, sounds that we can pronounce and that we can write, like splash. I can write S-P-L-A-S-H, that's splash. But I cannot write the, the, wa the actual water sound when somebody jumps into the water. I can write splash, but I cannot write the water sound. What I can do is maybe I can draw, make a small drawing of somebody jumping into the pool with water, you know, f uh, flying out in the air. And that's what, that's what humans used to do before they inv invented the alphabet, right? They would, if you, if you go to a museum, you'd see sometimes on the wall drawings and those drawings would represent a story or, or describe an event using pictures. Uh, sometimes they would do it using pictures because it's nice, nice to use pictures. Sometimes it was because there was no alphabet yet. So they would, humans would make drawings on the wall. Cavemen would make drawings on the wall. They didn't have letters yet. Um, so it is a representation of something. And here it's a word that's representing sound. So I could have represented sound with a drawing or with a, if I have alphabets, I can be represented with a word. Here, here's the section. Plop. And Wait, is it plop? Boom. Splat. Pow. Boom. Splat. Pow. Plop. Clink. Splash. <laughs> okay. Plop. Clink. Splash. All right, one more time. Plop, clink, splash. All right, so that was about representing a sound using wor a word. In this section, it's 212,000 hertz. So if you remember, the whale sound was 52. This one is 212,000. If you also remember, in the section about what the sounds that we could hear at the beginning of this video, we went up to 17,000. We started saying this is difficult for the adults to hear. 20,000, that was very difficult. This is 212,000. This is 10 times more difficult than what we can hear. So we're going to listen to it, but we're not listening to the original 212,000 hertz sound because we couldn't hear it. How can I play it in the video for you to hear it if we cannot hear it because of our ears? What we're listening to is, you remember I was telling you that um, high hertz sounds are fast. So what, what, what we can do is we can slow it down. So if we have a sound that's 212,000 hertz, if we slow it down, we play it again, it becomes slower and it gets a lower frequency. Like, I don't know if you know those mobile applications where you can record yourself and play yourself slower it becomes scarier like if i'm talking mm, i'm talking right now i slow it down it becomes i'm talking right now so that becomes a lower frequency and this is how we slow it down so if a bat here's the video that we're going to play now to the bat it would seem like i'm saying i'm talking now and you know the, frat, the, the bats would start making funny faces oh, well, what's that sound what's that bat sound making it's weird maybe that bat is sick so it's 212,000 hertz let's let's hear the slowed down version of it that's how it sounds when it's slowed down now why do bats make that sound it's called echolocation echolocation is something that animals use to see with sound I'm going to give you a small example. Um, imagine that, you know, you, you're ta I'm talking right now, right? Blah, 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 blah. Imagine I cover my mouth with my hands. I start talking again. It makes a little bit of an echo, a little bit of an echo, but it sounds different. So it sounds different when I'm talking like this or if I'm talking like this. 
And this is somehow kind of how echolocation works. Like if I were to close my eyes and guess if my hands are in front of my mouth, just by listening to my own sound, if I talk now, I'm not hearing an echo, I can guess that I'm not putting my hands in front of my mouth. But if I start talking like this, I can kind of hear myself making an echo. I can guess, okay, I guess my, my hands are in front of my mouth. So it's like I can see my hands in front of my mouth using sound. And that's sort of how echolocation works. So animals use sound to kind of see, uh, especially in the dark or deep in the ocean. Um, dolphins and whales use that too. Bats use that because they have poor vision. Bats are not blind. They have poor vision and they use the echolocation to help them identify, see, see their prey that they want to eat, whether it's the insect or, you know, uh, uh, avoiding flying into a wall uh, during the night and so on. Mm. All right. Let's hear it. All right, so to record this 212,000 hertz sound, it needs special devices. You cannot record it using your phone. If you see a bat, you try to record with your phone, you're, not, you're neither going to be able to record it, nor are you going to be able to hear it anyway. All right, this section is about a frog making sounds. So you notice that in these last few sections, we're starting to talk about animals making sound. This frog in Puerto Rico makes a sound that's 90 decibels. So remember, decibels is about loudness. So that's how loud this frog is, 90 decibels. Now, when you hear it, you can, you can guess it's, it's a squeaky sound. So it's a high hertz in terms of in terms of uh, squeakiness. All right, so that was this section. Any questions? All right, no questions. All right. Okay, so I'm going to ask somebody to volunteer and whistle because we're going to be talking about dolphin whistles. So I need somebody to volunteer, unmute, and whistle. Wow, do you know how to whistle? Because I don't. I would love to, but I can't. Do you want to try? Dina, Dina wants to do it. All Dina, right. Go ahead. That's really good. That's really good. How do you? How did you, how did you, this first step, recognize sound? So Kadambari is asking, what is the first step to recognize sound? What, what do you mean by recognize sound? Do you want to, do you want to unmute yourself and ask, you know, ex explain your question? Kadambari? No? All right. I, I would think, I think if I don't know the sound, like if it's a machine or something. Yeah. So if you don't know the sound, you mean like, uh, oh, how do you recognize what it is? Well, as a human, this comes with experience. Like you, during your life, you know, you've heard lots and lots of sounds. And once you hear a new sound, you try it in, in your brain, you try to match it with one of the sounds that you've heard before. And if it's something that you've heard before, you can guess what it is. If it's a new sound, that's when you start asking, hey, what was that sound? That's weird. It's a weird sound. When you say it's a weird sound, what that actually means is that your brain tried to search inside of it for, some, for the most similar sound that it had heard during your lifetime, and it didn't find anything. And that's instead of, you know, like in computers, it comes up as an error. And with your brain, it doesn't come up as an error, luckily, because otherwise, you know, you cannot just reboot your brain. Oh, error, my brain shut down because I heard a new sound. Um, you just say, what was that sound? And imagine a baby coming, yeah. Babies must be scared because they must hear tons of sounds that they don't recognize. Not only that, 
when a baby is born, the first few days, the baby's vision is blurry. So you hear lots of sounds and you can't see well. So, but when, when a baby is born, all the sounds that the baby is hearing are sounds that the baby has already started hearing while in the womb. So babies start hearing while they're still in their mother's body. That's why some people like to play music. You know, uh, a woman is pregnant, the baby's inside, they try to like to play music to it. A lot of people like to play, play classical music to the baby while still in the womb because the baby can start hearing already. Mm, uh, babies already develop their hearing capability before they're born. So, but yeah, you know, you're born, you start hearing new sounds and you cannot see very well. That's pretty scary. All right, so I answered Kadambari, Ario made a comment and Dino was whistling, perfect. So when you whistle, you, as a human making a whistle, what you do is you bring your lips together, like in this picture on the left, and you try to move your tongue to be in a certain position such that when you blow air out of your mouth, it makes a sound. Uh, I don't whistle very well. So with this, this is as good as it gets for me. So I put my lips together and I get my tongue closer to my lips a bit and I blow air out of my mouth. And that's how I generate the sound called a whistle. Now, we all know whistleblowers that we use during games, for example. That's the picture on the right. This is a small piece of uh, a small device that we can that makes it easier for um, people who can't whistle very well to whistle. So all you have to do is put it in your mouth and you blow and uh, it makes a whistle sound. Now, how does that one work? This one doesn't have a mouth and, and a tongue, but it has very something very similar. So if you notice the opening uh, on the very bottom, right, that's where you put your mouth, right? And that's where the air comes in. And if you compare that to how a human is whistling, that's as if the, the air is coming out of the lungs to the mouth. So that when you put your mouth on the whistle, you're blowing air into the whistle. And the next opening is where the air comes out. And the air coming out is like when you're whistling with your mouth, you know, you're blowing air out of your lips and that's the air coming out of that opening. That's what makes the sound. So when it comes out of that opening, that's when it makes the sound. And so we can either whistle with our own mouth or we can whistle with something like a whistleblower and animals whistle um in different ways as well and uh, so let's see which animals can whistle um, a mouse can whistle let's hear a mouse whistling this is duke university All right, this is a mouse whistling. Uh, if you look at the picture on the left, you'd notice that the mouse opens its mouth and it, uh, it gets air out of its mouth. It whistles similar to humans, but it doesn't put its, its lips together. It's because you know it's trying to squeak with its throat, more or less. So it doesn't have to do, so it can do, that's, and, but it does it so well that it becomes a whistle. Now, what I want to highlight to you is if you look at the video at this lower section here, you see this, this um, band in purple and blue. This is something we're going to talk about later. This is a way to visualize sound. It's called a spectrogram. I'm going to talk about it later, but remember how when I was talking a few minutes ago about how to see sound, this is how you see sound with this thing called a spectrogram. So I, what I want you to do is listen to the mouse whist, whistling and look at this band below and see how it's changing at the same time that the mouse is whistling. So you would notice that in the parts of this spectrogram when there's nothing, that's when the mouse is quiet. And where you have these white lines, that's where we see the mouse making squeaks, uh, whistling. And this is very similar to how we see dolphin whistles. So now you see the spectrogram doesn't have much. It has a bit of stuff, 
but this is called noise. This is just the background noise. And it's not the mouse whistling. And then when the mouse starts whistling, we start seeing things coming up again. There you go. You start seeing them in the spectrogram. That's when the mouse is whistling. All right. This is Duke University. Okay. Which other animals can whistle? A marmot. A marmot is a kind of a squirrel. Uh, it can also whistle. You look at it, it's whistling in the same way as the mouse. It's not putting its lips together. It opens its mouth and it just makes a whistle without putting its lips together. This is how a marmot sounds like. Hmm. All right, that was high frequency, high hertz, and high decibels. So high hertz because it's very squeaky and high decibels because it's loud. Does it want to whistle again? All right, there you go. That was a marmot. We heard you, thank you. <laughs> All right, now I want to show you how a caterpillar can whistle. Now a caterpillar whistles very differently than a mouse or a human. Look at this, let's start with the video on the left. Can you try to guess how the caterpillar can whistle? It doesn't have lungs. Well, it doesn't have, you know, like, like a human, it doesn't have a vocal tract and all that. Did you see it? How? All right, let's look at the video on the right. Let's look and try to guess how it's whistling. This is the caterpillar. Every time the scientist touches the caterpillar, you see it changes its shape. It compresses and it makes that squeaky sound. That's the whistle. That's the caterpillar whistle. So can somebody try to guess how this caterpillar can whistle if it doesn't have, you know, a mouth and you know, a vocal tract and so on? Anybody want to try to guess? There are suggestions that they're trying to squeak that they are the best butterflies. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to be the best butterflies. Yeah. I actually wanted to say that my son actually found a thing like this and made it squeak. And I couldn't even believe that caterpillars squeak until I actually heard it myself. And it, yeah. it's pretty loud. Yeah. That's very so, amazing. So the way it does it is it has small holes in its body. And when it compresses its own body, the air, when it compresses, it's like if you have a balloon, you compress it. You know those oh, those toys you when you had when you were younger, you compress it and it makes a squeaky sound. It works the same way. So it has air inside of it. It has holes around its body. When it compresses it, but its body, the air comes out of these small holes and that's how it makes that sound. Now imagine if I had holes in my shoulders, every time I do this, it would be squeaking. <laughs> That would be very, very annoying, and you would not be enjoying this presentation right now. So that's uh, that's. Aria uh, and how... Farnut actually said like a rubber duck. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's the same thing, just like a rubber duck. All right, we heard this one. We heard that one. Thank you. All right. Now dolphins. Let's hear a dolphin whistle. Now I want you to listen to this and tell me. What is the first thing that you notice is different between the sound that you're hearing in this video and the sounds that you heard in the previous ones? So tell me what the difference is between what you're going to hear now. did you feel was different in the sounds that you heard in, this, in the sound of this video? So Farnut says like little, little chickens or oh. like a really fast zipper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All For right. Me, 
Is yeah, there... the sound of water, yeah. of course. <laughs> the sound of water. Now, this is what I wanted to highlight to you. When we're recording ourselves talking and when we're recording a caterpillar or a, or a marmot or a mouse, the sound is very clear because we don't have sound of water. We, we're listening in the air medium. Now for mm, dolphins, we have one more difficulty in hearing their sounds because we got the sound of the dolphin and we got another sound that's on top of the, the dolphin sound and that's the sound of water. And the sound of water is a problem because first, you cannot just put a regular microphone in the water because the, uh, a regular microphone needs electricity and putting it in electricity, it would uh, burn out. So it's the same reason why you cannot put your, put a phone in the water. You know, you cannot just take a phone and go swimming with it in your pocket. It's, it gets damaged unless it's waterproof. So, and so what, what scientists invented was waterproof microphones uh, that help them record sounds underwater. But still the next, the, the next challenge is that when you're analyzing, you know, you're a machine, you're, you're, a, you're a scientist and you're trying to analyze the sounds with a machine or the computer and uh, you hear the computer will start hearing the dolphin and the sound of the water. And the sound of water makes it more difficult for the computer to recognize the difference between hearing nothing or hearing a dolphin because what it's actually hearing. So when you record, when a computer is recording the sound of a squirrel, let's say, it can either say, okay, I'm hearing nothing, or I'm hearing the sound of a squirrel. But when you're when a computer is listening to the sound recording of dolphins, it's not hearing either nothing or dolphin, it's hearing water or water plus dolphin. Now imagine on this Zoom call, we are two people talking at the same time. It's more difficult for you to understand what each of us is saying. Let's say Julia and I will start talking at the same time. Do you wanna try this? So let's start, of let's course. start talking at the same time. Of you course, we can try. Yeah, something, we'll be saying something later, <laughs> of course. <Right? laughs> so that's it. So when you have two sources of sound, it becomes more difficult to, to keep track of which is which. And the same thing is with recordings underwater. You have two sources of sound. You've got the dolphin and the water, so it becomes more difficult. So uh, yeah, that's it, sound of water. Okay. So this section is how can we see sounds so first we got the source of the sound this is mickey mouse whistling then we use a microphone the microphone is an electric device that can try, that can convert the sound that it hears in this part of the microphone this gray part and it converts it into an electric signal that goes through this black wire here and what we can do with the sound from this black wire is different things. One thing we can do is we can display it on an oscilloscope. An oscilloscope is the device that you see here in this picture. And what it does it is it shows you this line here or this line here or different shapes. It can show you many different shapes. Uh, uh, this is what this device is called. It's called an oscilloscope. And this is one way to see sound. This specific sound, is something like this. So the, the upper one, the triangular one, something like this. E All right, that's the upper one. The lower sound, which is rectangular, it's, we call it a sawtooth signal. Uh, it's something like this. E e e e e e. That's what the lower one is. All right. So by experience, you know, you were asking, how do we recognize what a sound is? By experience, you can either recognize a sound when you hear it, or when you see enough sounds like this as pictures in front of you, you start recognizing the sound just by looking at it. Like I can guess this what the sound is just by looking at what it is. And that's what I do in my dolphin uh, research, dolphin whistle research. I convert whistles into something that I can see. And then just, but I don't have to listen to all the whistles all day long. I just look at them in pictures and recognize, oh, this is this kind of whistle. This is another kind of whistle. That's what it is. And so we use our eye to see this picture that's going to be displayed on the oscilloscope. We're going to do, uh, in the next slide, <clears throat> we're going to use a virtual oscilloscope. So this is a link here that I'm going to paste into the chat. Oops. Uh, copy the link address. Chat. 
Oops. Go to chat. There. I'm gonna paste this link in chat. No, one, what one thing we can do, I'm gonna do it first to show you, and then you can go ahead and try it afterwards. Um, this is gonna take you to this website. It's gonna first ask you if you would let the website use your microphone. I'm gonna click allow. This is allow. All right, I'm gonna scroll down to here. And I'm gonna look at this blue picture. And if you notice, every time I start talking, this line starts moving. And when I go quiet, it just becomes a flat line. That's quiet. Now I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking. All right. So what I'm going to show you is what it means to be a loud sound and a quiet sound using this picture. So when I'm talking with a low voice, you notice that this line is, doesn't grow a lot vertically. So it doesn't, it's different than this. No, I'm talking with a loud voice now. It's bigger, bigger lines. When I'm talking with a low voice, it's smaller lines. So this is one difference that we see just from pictures. When I'm talking with a loud voice, it's bigger lines. When I'm talking with a low voice, it's smaller lines. All right. And the next thing I'm going to show you is when I make a difference. So that was what I showed you now was high decibels, low decibels, so loud or quiet. I'm going to show you high frequency or high hertz and low hertz. So if I make a uh, sound like you see the line becomes very zigzaggy. That's because it's very high frequency. S is a very high frequency. And this letter is a problem for me and my dolphin whistle research because I was trying to, I wrote a program that can recognize dolphin whistles. And I tried to execute that program on YouTube videos. And when I first started execution, I thought I found some dolphin whistles in YouTube videos, but it turns out that I was finding the letter S. And it so happened that the letter S, when a human says S in the video, it makes it look like as if it's a dolphin whistling. So it was tricky for the computer to recognize this. And I learned it later. So S, S high frequency. Dolphins make high frequency sounds, higher than human sounds. So that's why S becomes similar to dolphin whistles. Now, if I make a different sound, let's say, no, how about, You see, O is different than S. O, it's making these waves that are bigger than S, O, S, O. So this is the difference between high frequency, S is high frequency, O is lower frequency. So go ahead and try it out. Um, on your own, I'm gonna give you a minute to try this out. Try to see how your sound, how your voice sounds like. If anybody is having any trouble with the, with the link, also let me know. So you need to open the link and click on allow microphone. And that's when it starts working. You scroll down a bit to the blue square. All right. Um, I think let's. It move was on. very satisfying. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. So this is a virtual oscilloscope. You can you can use this link if you uh, want to uh, see how different sounds sound uh, sound like like maybe see uh, take it take it take it. if you got your if you're using your phone or using a laptop you can take it outside. Uh, if you find a bird making sounds, try to see what it looks like. If you if you throw something into water, or if you splash with water, see what water sounds like. Uh, <laughs> Arya's mom was asking her why she was shouting at her computer. All right. 
Uh, so you can try different sounds, not just your own sound. Try different letters, O and S. Try different sound letters. Uh, what you can do is try your voice versus an older person's voice. An older person has a deeper voice and a younger person has a squeakier voice. All right, so in this next section, I'm going to talk about what a spectrogram is. Now, when we opened this virtual oscilloscope, we were not looking at the spectrogram. You remember when, when I showed you the mouse video, it had a purple and blue band at the bottom. And now we were looking at different shapes in it that come and that show up and, and go away when there's uh, when it's quiet. Now, what we looked at in the virtual oscilloscope was not, not a spectrogram. It was the sound uh, as a time series. Uh, yeah, you can use dogs barking for the lamp. Yep. <laughs> OK, so what we're going to do is use a different link now. And this is called a spectrum analyzer. This is going to show us the spectrogram or a spectrum. I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm, I don't, I'm going to copy the link into the chat anyway, you can, so you can use it later. So the dog has separation anxiety and my mom left to run some errands. I was recording the wines. Nice. All right. So if you have a recording, if you recorded the wines of the dog, you can use them in this next link because in this next link, it doesn't use your microphone directly, but you can upload a recording into it. So if you already recorded that, those wines with your phone or with a laptop or a computer, the, the file that gets saved, you can upload it into this next link. All right, here it is. Or if you have different recordings, you can upload them here and see what the spectrogram looks like. And the spectrogram shows you, so the, the, the virtual oscilloscope showed you when it was high, when it was high decibels or low decibels, something that was bigger or smaller. And when it was high hertz and low hertz, something that was either faster or slower. Um, and this next one on the spectrum analyzer, it shows you similar thing, but this, the same properties, decibels and hertz, but instead of showing you zigzags and lines, it shows you like a painting. And when this, when when you look at this painting, if the the drawing in the painting, if it's higher on your computer screen, that that means it's higher hertz. When it's lower on your computer screen, it means it's lower hertz. When it's yellow, that means it's higher decibels, and when it's black, that means it's lower decibels. So with a spectrogram, it's it's more special than the first time series display. And I'll tell you why in a, in a second. So let's open this. Let's look at, I wonder if they have dog barking sounds. So they have bird sound. So the, and at this link, if you just open it, scroll down, you see these numbers. This is a plot and it shows you bigger numbers. So K is for a kilo. One kilohertz is 1000 Hertz, just like one kilogram is 1000 grams. So this is 21.6 kilohertz. So this is 21,600 hertz. This is 21,600 hertz. On the lower part is 4,700 hertz. So this is 4,000, this is 21,000. So as I told you, higher hertz on top, lower hertz at the bottom. So let's hear what a bird song looks like in a spectrogram. So if you notice in this part of the spectrogram, there's a lot of black because the bird was quiet. And the part before it, there were some 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 draw some shapes. That's because the bird was whistling. And in this part, the bird is whistling again. So you start seeing more uh, more colors again. And yellow is for high high decibels. And purple is kind of medium decibels and black is low decibels. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna point something that some of you may have noticed. In this part, there was a bird whistling, but it was farther away. So it was lower decibels. So that's why you don't see yellow, but you see red and pink. So it was lower decibels. It's, um, um, th this bird was farther away. So we see, don't see the same shapes like in this one. 
And when I was doing the dolphin whistle research, it's the same, I faced the same problem. I'm trying to identify dolphin whistles. Some dolphins are closer to the microphone. Some dolphins are farther. When the dolphin is farther, this is what, this is what you see. And this is more difficult for a computer to detect as a whistle. But when it's closer, this is easier for a computer to detect as a whistle. Same thing for humans. If humans look at this, it's easy to say this is a bird whistling. But if you look at this without hearing the sound, you might say, okay, maybe this is just a background sound. Maybe it's just background noise. Uh, is it a really a bird? Is it not a bird? So that, this is where you, you say, okay, I'm going to listen to the file and identify if there's a bird here. All right, so this is a spectrogram. Notice how in this section, what happened? What happened? The bird was listening to this. T -t 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 -t. So when it did, t -t -t -t, the yellow line starts going up. It's like starts here, then it cuts a bit, goes here, and then cuts a bit. And you see some yellow dot here. I don't know if it's clear for you or zoom, but it's this whistle looks like this, like a line up. This is why spectrograms are useful because you can start seeing how the whistle changed over time. By looking at this and seeing a line going up, I can already guess that the sound sounds like. All right, in this part, the bird said, you see, and then went down, and then went higher. This is why spectrograms are useful. If I look at this, I can, and if I'm really good at whistling or better than I am, I can whistle the same bird sound. This is the same concept that is used in music. When you have music notes, if any, if any of you, does anyone play like piano or violin or guitar or any music instrument? Actually, who, I'm gonna open chat. Who plays some music? Aria? Ilan? Okay, what do you play? Guitar, all right. So when you read the notes, do you read the notes, the one in violin, all right. The notes, the circles go up when you're playing higher notes. Da, 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 da. It's it's the same idea as a spectrogram, piano and guitar. All right. Oh, Michael, I'm glad you're still alive. I thought your heart was was down to zero, and <laughs> and you played both piano and guitar. You're a talent. Okay. <laughs> Michael just drew a spectrogram. This line is well. I don't know if that's what he intended, but it looks like you know the an EKG electrocardiogram when somebody's heartbeat goes down to zero in like in movies you see the machine go dude so michael i'm guessing he wanted to tell me dude his heartbeat went to zero and what he did was represent the sound with a bunch of dashes and that's or i'm just over analyzing as i usually do but so he presented the sound with a bunch of dashes michael am i over analyzing don't don't make me look bad in front of the class. All right, no, all right. So, so Michael, what he did was he unconsciously or in, indirectly uh, drew a spectrogram. He drew a straight line. That's what, that's what a, the beep of an electrocardiogram sounds like when the heart just stops. It's a straight line. Why is it a straight line? It's a straight line because it's the same it hertz. It doesn't change. It's like, doo is the same hertz. If it were changing, like then you have a messed up heart. Um, and that's when you start seeing it. Uh, you see it jumping. But when you see an electrocardiogram and you see those lines, that's not the spectrogram. That's the time series one. That's similar to the virtual oscill oscilloscope. So that's where you see lines. Yeah, there you go. These uh, that's the time series, the oscilloscope, uh, virtual oscilloscope one. That's where it's not flat. You have the heartbeats going. Doot, doot, doot. All right. All right. So, so what I was saying in terms of uh, music instruments is that the spectrogram, when it shows you uh, yellow dots going up, it's just like music notes. When you're looking at your music sheet, you see the circles going up. It's actually a kind of a spectrogram because you see it go up. 
do, 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 do. You see circles going up, so that's do, 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 do. And you try to play the same note with your guitar or your violin, and you try to make a, a higher, higher hertz sounds. All right, so that's enough for the spectrum analyzer. Let's go back to this presentation. All right, in this next link, we are trying to, we're going to do an exercise of, uh, we're going to listen to a sound and we're going to try to look at the spectrogram and guess which part of the spectrogram belonged to the bird and which part of the spectrogram belonged to a beetle. So this sound has a bird and a beetle and we're going to listen to it and uh, we're going to try to guess which is which. So I pasted the link. Actually, you don't need to. I mean, you know what? I'm going to delete. I'm going to keep the link for your reference later, but you don't need to open it. I'm just going to open it here. All right, so here it is. This is the spectrogram, and we're going to see a line go through. If oh. All right, so there's no line. All right, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna replay the sound and I'm gonna move the, my mouse cursor as if it is that line showing you where on the spectrogram we are, okay? I'm gonna play this again. All right, so. We played the sound. It starts with a bird. It starts with nothing, and then a bird starts whistling, and then it stops, and then something else goes on. So we heard two things: bird and a beetle. Can you try to guess uh, which part is the bird and which part is the beetle? So the sound was playing like this, and then we heard the bird, and then we kept hearing the beetle. So it's going to be difficult for you to I don't know can do you want to can can we use the annotation like can 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 people sure, draw sure. can you draw if you, on if my you, screen if you allow for annotation of course how do I how do I allow it just, just don't disallow and you will be fine all right so what about you Julia can do you want to try and draw on my screen Let where you me. think the bird is so draw a circle around the part of the spectrogram that you think belongs to the bird. Anthony asks two five seconds is the bird. Uh, just a second. I'm... Yeah, yeah, this is two. This is five. Let, let me get, uh, for some reason, instead of annotation, I'm getting breakout rooms. Just a second. I may need to switch to a different, to a different option. All right, how about we do it over, you know, we just use seconds, like somebody, let me open the chat and see. All right, so two to five seconds, that's the bird. Yep, so that's two to five seconds. So this part, I'm going to draw a circle around it. This part, Ooh. this part was the bird. What about uh, the beetle? What do you think about the beetle? You can just try to use the seconds. <laughs> right, does, somebody, does somebody <laughs> want to try to tell me for, in terms of seconds? So this is five seconds. This is six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and this is four, three, two, one. Does anybody want to try to guess where the beetle was? So the sound was like bird, doo -doo 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 -doo, and then beetle. Eh, eh, eh. All right, so the six was bird. Yeah. What about the beetle? Three to ten. Three, so you're starting from here. Interesting. It's interesting. You think it's three to ten. I'm gonna draw at three. You think it starts here. This is where you think the beetle is. All right, this is ten. All right, this is a very interesting answer. So does anybody wanna anybody else want to try to guess the beetle? Do you all think it's three to 10 or does anybody think it's different? 
This is three. This is ten. Does somebody think it's different than three to ten? Barnut says six to. We eight. have six to eight. You have Michael with five to ten. All right. So we have six to eight, and we have five to ten. All right. Okay. So actually, Arya is right. It's three to ten. And, and and Anthony is also right. So Anthony was the one who said five to ten, five. To, so Michael said, okay, Michael is also right, five to ten. So five to ten is also beetle. And somebody said six to eight. Six to eight. For new, it's six to eight. Six to eight. Now eight to ten is also a beetle for new. So five to ten is obviously a beetle, this part. And what Arya noticed is that these dashes here, they continue back here, starting from three. Now, it's very difficult to recognize that the beetle starts here, especially if you just rely on sound. If you're only listening to the, to the file, it's difficult to recognize that the beetle starts at three unless you're really focused. But if you look at the spectrogram, you can start, you can look and you see this dash is going, starting here. No, wait, it starts earlier. No, wait, it starts earlier. Now, it's difficult to say from the spectrogram where exactly it starts, because what if Arya saw it starting at three? What if there is something with the beetle starting here that we cannot see very clearly because it was a bit farther or because it started with a quieter sound? So it's tricky. So saying five to ten is a sure answer. You know for sure that's where the beetle is. You know that there's some dashes here. You know this is a beetle. But once you cross before four, you're not 100% sure, like this line here, is it really a beetle or is it just noise that happens to be at the same frequency or hertz level as the beetle? Yeah, this probably is a beetle. What about this one? Mm, I don't know. So here I showed you an example of where two different sounds are overlaid in a spectrogram. And uh, I need to remove this annotation. So da -da -da -da, clear all drawings, all right. So the bird is what I what we drew in green. That's for sure, you know, uh, two to five. And then the beetle for sure is from five to ten. And where it's mixed is in here from three to five. And this is where it's tricky. It's tricky for human skin. Like Aria could easily identify, okay, this was a beetle at the same time as the bird. But for a computer to automatically identify this, this is very tricky because these lines are mixed up with the small lines from the bird. This is very, this is a very tricky uh, sound for a computer to analyze. All right. Now, dolphin whistles. In this part, I'm showing you three different spectrograms belonging to three different uh, dolphins. Mm, I want you to try to guess in the chat what each dolphin is saying. <laughs> well, I don't know. Do you have any idea what it means when a dolphin says this? And do you have any idea why this dolphin makes this sound different than why well, it's making a sound that looks different than this? So this dolphin, we're not listening to the sounds, you know, this, we're just looking at the spectrograms now. Uh, but we can see what the sound looks like. This dolphin sound here looks like this. It makes this kind of whistle. This dolphin here makes this kind of whistle. And this dolphin here is making this kind of whistle. So, these are called dolphin signature whistles. A dolphin signature whistle is a special kind of whistle that a dolphin um, chooses for itself. It's like a name. So when a dolphin is born, it doesn't have the signature whistle yet. But what, as, it, as it grows up, it hears the different whistles of its pod. It hears the different whistles of the dolphins around it. It starts to come up with its, its it tries to find, OK, I've heard all these different kinds of whistles. Uh, is there any whistle that I can come up with that makes me special? Can I change the whistles a little bit to make a new whistle that is special? That's what makes it kind of a name. So. A signature whistle is a special kind of whistle that dolphins can make, not for communicating with each other, but to self-identify. So it's like they're saying their own name. This is 
when, when if you're swimming and you you hear this sound here on the left, you can immediately recognize and this is the specific dolphin that makes this whistle. And there is no other dolphin in the whole world that's going to make this exact whistle. Same thing here. You look at this whistle here. If you hear it, you're going to be sure that this is the only dolphin that's making this whistle. And wherever you are around the world, if you hear this whistle again, and this is the this is the dolphin that made this whistle. Like if this dolphin's name is let's say. Do we have somebody who's on is all right. All right, and if you hear this whistle, uh, it's gonna to belong to this specific dolphin. So if this dolphin's name is Flipper, then you know that's Flipper making that sound. So these are signature whistles. I'm gonna show you uh, these are whistles. A set that comes from a paper called from by Sarah Marley in 2017. It's a paper called This Here, and at the bottom is the source of the recording. It's called, it's called Underwater Recordings of Whistles of Bottlenose Dolphins in Fermento Inner Harbor. So, and this, where I'm going to show you the spectrograms and we're going to look at the whistles and trying to guess what they mean. Are these, are these signature whistles or are they just normal whistles? This is a dolphin. You can see it's making, if you look at the spectrogram here, it's making three bumps. And this whistle is like three whistles, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like an ambulance. Here it's only making one. Yeah. Here it's making one. Yeah. Here it's making one. Yeah. Here it's making two again, or actually three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is what do you think this means? That it, to me, it doesn't look like the previous slide. It's not, it doesn't look like a signature whistle because. A signature whistle is just one thing. And if, if any, if the dolphin wants to say the name again or that signature whistle, it's going to be the same shape again. What we're looking at here is not the same thing repeating. It's something that is has three and then one and then one and then one and then three again. So I don't think this is a signature whistle. Maybe the dolphin is trying to say something. Three, one, 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 three. Is it trying to spell its password to its uh, passcode to its phone? I don't know. It's, it looks like three one one three three one 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 three, or is it saying like three and then saying three is one plus one plus one? Maybe I don't know, but this is a this is a kind of whistle. All right, here for example we have two one and one, then we have two. Is it saying one plus one is two? I don't know. Is it saying something else? I don't know. Nobody knows what they're saying. So this was the first kind of whistling from the same source. We have, now let's listen to these whistles. So these whistles, these dolphin whistles look different. These are just going up, right? It's not the same ambulance. It's just going up. Do you hear the sound of water in the background? It's like zh, 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 zh. it's the it's the sound of water plus the sound of the dog. Okay, so on this slide, what I did was I put uh, one of the spectrograms from the first whistles that we heard. And the spectrogram of the second whistle. So this is the spectrogram, the spectrogram from the first whistle, the one that goes, uh, 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 and then this is the spectrogram from the second kind of whistle, the one that goes, uh, 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 you know. So can you just look at these two spectrograms and say these are the same or these are different? What do you think? Are, do you think they're the same or do you think they're different? Right. 
Shapes look different. Yeah. So. All right. Yeah, it looks like a way. One's going upwards. Yeah. So. As a human, we can just, as humans, we can look at these two pictures and say these are different. We can say one is like a wave and one is going upwards. What about a computer? How does a computer recognize if these are different or not? Can we write a program that can take these pictures and tell us these are different? That's, uh, that's what I was working on in my research. So I'm gonna show you the steps that I did when I wrote the program. So this is the first step. The first step that I did in my program was take the first spectrogram and highlight on the spectrogram in yellow and red the parts where I see this black line. So this was the first part of my program. Wherever I saw black, I would draw on it in yellow, orange, and red. So I would draw, and then I would put a black box in the program around the part where I drew in yellow, orange, or red. So this is some one place that if you look here, these parts were black. So I drew some red. If you notice here, I drew something and then I, the program stopped. So it's not, I'm not doing this manually, right? This is a computer program that's doing this. So the computer program decided not to draw anything here at this point where it, so it kind of broke the whistle. And that's because if you look here, you see it's kind of black, and then you see it go into white, and then goes to black again. So the computer said that this part, I don't need to color this in red or, or red or orange. So it stopped, and it continued drawing here. And then when it finished drawing, it looked at these two uh, shapes that it drew. And instead of making two boxes, instead of making one box around this one, and one box around the second one, it said, okay, these are two shapes that I drew, but they're close enough. So I'm gonna put them in one box. That's, that's, uh, this is something that I wrote into the program. So I, told, I wrote into the program, something that says, draw on top of these black lines. And if you see, if you draw something and then you stop and draw something else, and if they're close to each other, like these two, put them in the same box and give this box a number. So here I said number 53. All right, and then computer program kept on going. So next, it went on to this part here. And so I saw some black curves. It drew on top of them in yellow, orange, and red. And it placed a black box around it. It saw some black lines here. It drew in red, orange, and yellow on it. But then it decided, I'm not going to put a black box around it because, you know what, this doesn't look like a whistle. It's too short. All the other whistles are longer. So this one is too short. It's too flat also, it's like a straight line. You know what, I'm gonna say this is in the whistle, so I'm not gonna put a box on it. What about this one here? You see here it drew something in yellow, orange, and red. If you look at the spectrogram, you kind of see something kind of black here. And then the computer program said, okay, I drew this, but I'm not gonna put a black box around it because you know what? Dolphins cannot make sounds that are going vertically up that fast. Like if something were to make a sound like this that goes so fast, it'd be like, it, it's, I mean, even I am trying to make it, but what I'm making is something that's a straight line going up very fast, but it's not so fast that it's straight line going up. So um, it decided, the computer program decided that this is not a whistle. Here, the computer program got tricked into thinking that this is a whistle. It drew something here in yellow, orange, and red, and then it said, okay, this looks like a whistle. I'm going to put a black box around it. So this is a whistle. Indeed, I can, as a human, I can look at it and say, yes, this is also, this is also. But when I look at this, I say, okay, this is where the computer program messed up. And this is something we call in artificial intelligence or machine learning, we call this, or statistics, we call this a false positive. A false positive is something that the computer thinks is a whistle, but it's, I can look at it and say, okay, this is the whistle. And then here, the computer program continued again. It drew something on this black on the black lines here, and then put a box on it. So this is something called a true positive. So this is uh, it's positive because the computer thought it was a whistle. It's true because I think it's right. 
this is a false positive. It's positive because the computer thought it was a whistle, but it's false because I don't think it's right. So this is the first step in the computer algorithm that I wrote. And then the second step is do the same thing, but on the next spectrogram, which is the one that's going up. So just draw in yellow on these lines, the black ones, and put a box on it. If you think it's a whistle, that's the computer program. And if you see something that's going too fast up, like a straight line up, I don't think that's a whistle, so don't put a box on it. So this is a true negative. It's negative because the computer doesn't think it's a whistle. It's true because I think the computer is right. These are true positives. It's positive because the computer thinks it's a whistle. It's true because I think it's right. All right, and then the next step, step number three, is I wrote into the program something that looks at these shapes that I drew and converts them to Braille. Now, I wanna look at the chat and see how many people know what Braille is. So who? Think, who knows what Braille is? Say yes, and uh, I, I know it. And who doesn't know what Braille is? Say, I don't know. Or write, I don't know. So Arya knows what Braille is. Does anybody else know what Braille is? All right, everybody else don't know what Braille is? All right, Kevin knows what Braille is. All right, so for, for the other people who don't know what Braille is, Braille is a kind of an alphabet that humans invented for blind people to use. Imagine I'm blind, I cannot see, I want to read a book. How do I read it? I cannot see what the letters are. So what humans invented instead was Braille, where instead of, printing letters on a paper. Humans invented machines that would make an, make an embossing. So something that comes out of the paper and shapes of dots, or sometimes you see it on elevator, on elevator buttons next to the number, like you see the number in one and then you see something in dots under it, that's the braille. So it's something that instead of looking at it and seeing that it's number one, you can put your finger on it and feel these small dots. And that's how you know what, what it is. And you have to memorize what the different shapes of dots are, which one is one, which one is two, which one is five, and so which one is A, B, C. And that's how blind people can read. They have this book written in Braille. They just put their hand on the Braille and they feel the different bumps on the paper. And they can say, okay, this is T-H-E. Uh, so that's the, uh, D-O-G, dog. J-U-M-P-E-D, jumps, all right? So that's how, that's what Braille is. So what I did was write a computer program that looks at these shapes and converts them to Braille. So if you look at this shape, it's a wave that goes, it's up, down, up, down. So if you look at Braille, it's a dot up and then dot down, then dot up and then dot down. So it's like, I tried to represent this curve in just the dots. And here, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, and this one here, the one that's a false positive, the computer thinks it's a whistle, so I cannot stop it. It thinks it's up, down, down. So up, down, down, you see, it's just going down. So it's converting the next step, step number three is converting the whistles to braille. And then do the same thing again for the next spectrogram. These are just lines, just two dots, two dots, dot, two dots, just one lower dot and one higher dot, two dots. Converting them to braille. And then step number five, I just compared the Braille text. And computers, for computers, writing a computer that compares this picture to this picture is difficult. But writing uh, a computer program that compares these Braille letters, one, two, three, four, four words in Braille, to these words in Braille, one, two, three, four, five, is much easier. For a computer program. The first thing that the computer can do to tell me that these two are not the same is just count them. So the computer is going to count one, two, three, four words. And then here it's going to count one, two, three, four, five words. So it's going to say, okay, they're not the same. One is four words, one is five words. So go back to the spectrograms. All right. So one, this is the first whistle. Two, this is the second whistle. 
three, the wrong whistle that computer thought it was. This is the third one, and this is the fourth one. So it found four whistles. Here it found five. So this one, one, two, three, four, five. So this is the first and easiest thing the computer program can do to tell me, okay, these are different. The next thing it can do to tell me that it's different, they're different is actually look at these braille dots and say this letter, these two letters, one up down and another up down, but a little bit higher are different than down up. So that's another way the computer program can tell me it's different. So uh, this is a much easier way for computers to do this comparison. And that's when it's done. That's the end of the computer program. Does anybody have any questions about this computer program? I was told that some of you know how to program. So some of this might be familiar. All right, all right you're welcome, Dina. Dina has to go. All right. So I heard that some of you can write programs. So you might be familiar with the idea of having steps in a computer program. You do step number one, step number two, step number three. Oh, look at that, Michael does Python. Nice. I, I actually wrote all this in Python as well. Uh, I used Python. Python is, uh, is very popular in artificial intelligence uh, because it has so many, uh, so much help from other people. Like I can write a program in, part in Python. And if I don't know how to convert a whistle to Braille, like in this step, let's say I don't know how to do this step to convert this whistle to Braille. I can just go online on the internet and search for how to convert a whistle to Braille. And I'll find somebody has written a computer program that doesn't. And I take their program and put it into my own program. So my program is composed of different programs that other people have written. All right, starting JavaScript, a bit of JavaScript, uh, pretty inexperienced. Yeah, that's how everybody starts. All right. So JavaScript is another programming language. So what Michael was writing in ARIA, these are programming languages. So when, it, when people write programs, you can use a different language. Just like in talking, I can use the English language. I can speak uh, French, I can speak Francais, I can speak Espanol, hablar uh, Espanol, I think that's what it is. Uh, I can speak uh, different languages. Um, and in programming, it's uh, the same. You can choose different programming languages. And Michael already knows one programming language called Python. I know it as well. He's starting JavaScript. Um, uh, I know it as well. That's two programming languages. All right. So, so let's see. All right. Michael's friend can do is doing C++. That's difficult. I would uh, be very impressed. C++ is very difficult, and but it's also faster. C++ is faster than Python sometimes. Uh, so, so when when somebody's writing a program that needs to be super fast, uh, they probably would not choose to do it in Python. They would choose to do it in C++. A multilingual programmer, yeah. Uh, a multi. You if you go into programming in the future you would find that you have to be multilingual. It's never enough to just learn one language. Some people go into university, college, they're thinking, I'm just going to learn one thing. But uh, you have to learn many languages because depending on the situation, the project you're working on, you might need to change languages. For example, let's, let me give the example of Python or JavaScript. Michael is doing Python, does Python and starting to learn JavaScript. Python is a programming language that you can use to build websites uh, like you can you can bring your own computer you put python on it you write a, a website in python you put it on the computer you run your website now when i open your website with my phone i i don't get python on my phone what i get on my phone is javascript so but I, if I open Michael's website, it would first start executing the part of the program that's written in Python. And then what it does is using the Python program, it generates, it generates another program written in JavaScript, which Michael would have already written. So Michael would have to write Python and JavaScript. So the Python part generates the JavaScript program and then Michael's computer at home that is called a host. 
would send to my phone, it wouldn't send the Python, it would send the JavaScript. And my phone can run JavaScript. So phones typically, unless you install a special application, they would not run the Python code, but you can build a website with Python. So the phone would run the JavaScript part. So there you go. This is an example of two languages. You got, if you want to build websites, you got to learn Python and JavaScript. You could still build websites using just JavaScript, um, but you could also do it with both. Java is for games, not JavaScript. Java, yeah, Java is different than JavaScript. That's right. Uh, you know, lots of programmers uh, grow up and work several years and still don't know that Java is different than JavaScript. Uh, Java is for games. It could be for games, could be for other things. Uh, you, you'll figure that out by yourself and with experience if you become a programmer. All right, so in this next section, uh, can Minecraft was made with Java? Is Minecraft, how do you know Minecraft was made with Java? Oh, it's called Java edition? All right. Yeah. Actually, you could, if I'm not mistaken, you could, uh, you could download the Minecraft program um, from the internet. If I'm not mistaken, I'm going to look very quickly now to see if, I, if what I'm saying is right. Is what I'm saying right? Could we? So I'm going to go to a website called github.com. This is some, this is a website that has where people usually publish programs. I'm going to see if Minecraft is a game that is all right. So I'm looking here on the right. I see Minecraft Forge. I see Minecraft. This is a simple Minecraft inspired program using Python, Docker image. Okay, so I don't see the Minecraft game. So I thought maybe Minecraft is something, is a game that you can download the original program instead of just the game. So you cannot download the program. It's called the source code. So you cannot download the source code, apparently. So you use a website called GitHub. All right. So let's go back to my presentation. So I was at this slide. So can computers count dolphin whistles? Let's go back to dolphin whistles. Um, so I had shown you how the computer program I wrote can um, translate whistles to braille and compare them. Now, the next thing I wanted it to do was count how many of this kind of whistle happened, up, down, up, down. How many of this kind of whistle happened, up, down, down. How many of this kind of whistle happened, down up, you see, and if you look at this picture, these, these braille words here, you'll notice that the down up is the most frequent one. You see, it happens one, two, three, four, five times. Um, here you see one happening up down, and this is up down, up down. It happens once, it doesn't happen again. So I wanted to know, is it true that this whistle is the whistle that dolphins make the most? So, I downloaded data from a website called mobisound.org. Uh, there's a place on the website where you can download about five hours of dolphin sound. So it's a it's five hours of recordings. So um, uh, somebody went out into the ocean, got their own special waterproof microphone, placed it into the water where they think there are dolphins. And they sat on the boat for five hours under the sun, having a barbecue maybe on the boat. I hope it's not a barbecue because that's a fire hazard. But they were sitting there having a tan on the boat, waiting for five hours. And then after they finished the five hours of recording, they uh, uploaded it to this website called mobisound.org. Um, if, you, if you do go to mobisound.org, you got to click on workshops. And then on workshops, you got to click on the fifth workshop. And that's where you can download the same sounds that I worked on in my research. So if you do that, so I did that. I ran my program, my computer program on it, and I told it to count the whistles. I found it found 1,615 down up whistles. So it is true that the down up, the, uh, the simple up whistle is the most frequent one. The next whistle that it found was the one that goes down. Uh, it found 1,312 whistles in those five hours, and so on. 
And so it counted, these are the five most frequent whistles. This is just a simple up, the one that we heard uh, earlier. This is down, so it's the opposite. Yeah, it goes like that. This one is flat and up, so, uh, so uh, right? It's flat. Uh, when you say it's flat, that means in the spectrogram, it's on the same line of the Hertz measurement. So it's the same Hertz measurement. It's not, it's it's like uh, just like the dead heartbeat that uh, Michael had written uh, in the chat. So, uh, and then it goes up, uh, right? The next one, 201 times, it goes, uh, right? It's like the upside down U that we saw in the previous spectrogram. And then there's the 195 times of this whistle that goes down and up. So, uh, so it goes down uh, and then goes up, uh, right? So these are the five most frequent whistles that are found in these recordings. Now, um, what I did was I used a website called Teachable Machine. Um, I, I was told that some of you know what Teachable Machine is. So what I did was I used Teachable Machine to make a web application that can recognize. So it, it has a, a program inside of it so that it can recognize which whistle uh, it's hearing. So what I told this machine or what I taught this machine was the five whistles that I have here. So one goes up, goes down, one is flat then up, one is up then down, and one is down then up. So I taught this machine these five whistles and it's at this link. I'm going to open the link. I'm going to paste it uh, for you in chat. All right, so if you open this link, I'm going to open it as well. You can open it on your machine and on your site and I'm going to open it on my site. I'm going to show it. I'm going to show it to you first. <clears throat> so what it does. This is the machine that I taught. So I taught this machine. All right. And here it has the different, okay. So I'm talking now. I have the different whistles that I taught it, right? So it has background noise, meaning I'm not doing it. So if I go quiet. There you go. You see, it started, this number in orange that went all the way up to 98%. So I taught this machine to recognize when I'm quiet. This one is quiet. This one is down then up. This one is flat then up. This one is up then down. This one is down and this one is up. So I'm gonna try to do the up one because that's the easiest. I'm gonna try to whistle now the computer. It probably either asked you here on the left to say allow microphone. I think I clicked it already. Now it's listening to what I'm saying because if you look up here, you see this blue band that's moving? This is the spectrogram. So we're looking at a spectrogram here. And here it's giving us what the different uh, whistles that I taught it. So I'm gonna whistle up. Oops. So apparently what I'm doing is whistling up and down. I, and I don't whistle very well. I'm gonna try it again. Mm, I'm a bad one. Oh, look at that. I'm going to try the down one. It's easier. I'm trying to whistle these dolphin whistles. It's not easy to whistle these dolphin whistles. That's why the title of the slide is Can You Whistle Like a Dolphin? So I'm going to try again. So this was the down whistle. You hear it. Listen to that. I can do this. <laughs> I can whistle like a dolphin when, it, when it's a down whistle. It's more difficult for me when it's an up whistle. I'm going to try the up one again. I, uh, it's not working. Uh, it's difficult for me. The other ones are even more difficult for me. I'm going to try flat and up. So this one, the purple one. Hmm. Uh, look at that. I whistle so bad that the computer think I'm, thinks I'm quiet when I'm whistling. Uh, I'm a bad whistler. Maybe you, maybe you can whistle better than I do. So you can use this uh, computer program that I wrote. Yeah, so this machine that I taught, 
at this link to try to whistle like a dolphin and see if it recognizes your whistles. So if you if you're really whistling like a dolphin. Um, all right. Now in this part, um, I have slides that teach you how to use Teachable Machine. So can you teach a computer to recognize more dolphin whistles? So what I did is I put here the second top five whistles that dolphins make. So the first one was the most, these are the most frequent, these are the whistles that dolphins make the most. So this is 1,600 times, 1,300 times, so on. These ones are much lower numbers. These are the next five. So you can try to whistle those based on the shape. So this is up then down. So you try to whistle and you try to record those whistles into the teachable machine and, uh, and uh, teach the machine how to whistle these next five. Um, you can even do the first five uh, if you want. So um that's how you can do it so you just these are these, these are the slides so i'm going to go through them real fast now but you can do this on your own uh if you get a copy of the slides you can just follow these steps so the first step is you just open this link and you click on get started the second step is it will give you do you want to work on it do you want to teach a, a computer how to recognize images or audio, audio means sound, or different poses. So it's, it's looking at you and you're making different shapes with your hands. So we're doing audio project. And then you see this screen and you click on microphone. And after you click on this microphone under background noise, you have to first record. It's gonna tell you, okay, do you wanna allow the browser to use your microphone? You click on allow. And it's going to tell you to record 20 seconds here. So you have to record 20 seconds of, of just quiet. You're sitting somewhere, you don't have a dog barking, and you just record 20 seconds. So you click on record 20 seconds. And when it's done, you have to click on extract sample. Here, this button, you click on extract sample. And then after you've finished with the background noise, meaning just quiet room. You scroll down, you see something called class two. Now you click on this pencil right next to class two and you change the name from class two to something like, if you want to do this whistle, you call it up then down. Just write up then down instead of class two. And then you do the same thing like you did for the quiet one, the background noise. You click on mic. So you click on mic again, and then it's going to tell you you have to record. And so you record two, this time it's going to tell you two seconds, not 20 seconds like the first one. So it tells you to record two seconds, but you have to record multiple times the two seconds. Uh, so what I, what I did when I used the teachable machine and the link that I gave, showed you, um, I, in these two seconds, I made the whistle two times. So I copied the whistle. So in the first second, the whistle is there the first time. And then the second one, second, 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 the whistle is there this time, the next time. So in two seconds, I put two whistles and it, the teachable machine will tell you, you got to do that for 10 samples, meaning that you have to do five times of two seconds. So that's 10 seconds. After you finish with the first whistle, the one that says up and down, you can add another whistle by going down to this button here called add class. You click on add class, add the class, and you do the same thing. You're going to see something here that's like class three. You click on the pencil, you change its name from class three to down up, and then you click on record two seconds again, and then you click, oh, I forgot to tell you, after you click record two seconds, you don't forget to click on extract sample. If you don't click extract sample, it's not going to take those two seconds. You're going to be recording two seconds, two seconds, two seconds, but you're not going to be advancing. You're not teaching the machine anything. You have to click on extract sample. So every time you click record two seconds, then extract sample. All right, so you do that for all the different whistles. When you're done with the different whistles, you have to go through here, the train model. So train model means you tell the computer to start learning. So you click on train model. It takes about a minute. After one minute, you see this window show up here on the right. So you see background noise and you see up then down and you see the different uh, sounds that you recorded 
And you can test, this is where you test that the computer actually learned the right whistles. So you, you stay quiet, you look at the spectrogram here and you try to see that background noise one goes up and then you try to make the first whistle up then down and you have to see it go to 98% or a big number. And that's how you know you, you're testing the computer, you're testing your model. So in artificial intelligence, you build a model and you test it. And this is how you're testing your model. And then when you're done, you want to save your model. So you want to save a machine that learned your whistles. You don't want it to just go to trash. So you have to click on these dashes here on the top left. And then you either click on download project as file, or if you have a Google account, you can click save project to drive. And that's how you save the file to Google Drive, or you save the file to your own laptop or computer. Or I think you can even do this on your phone or on a tablet. So you save your file so that you can use it next time. And if you're if you finished your testing and you think this computer really did learn how to whistle, how to recognize dolphin whistles, if you want to share this, share a link, like I shared a link with you, if you want to share a link with somebody to tell them, okay, how about you try this? I, I taught a computer how to recognize dolphin whistles. Can you whistle like a dolphin? You have to click on export model. Then after you click export model, you have to click on upload my model. And when you click on upload my model, you will get a link. And this is the link that you can use. So you just copy that link and you can send it to your friends. You can send it to yourself on your phone. And if you have a waterproof phone, waterproof, don't take just any phone. If you have a waterproof phone, you could take that phone, open that link on your phone, and if it's waterproof, you can put your phone underwater and try to search for dolphins while you're, while you're swimming. Uh, because you're going to be looking at that, you know, the, this, this, these lines here, the bars here, and you're going to be, it's, the phone is going to be recording and it's going to show you, okay, I heard a whistle. And you could be swimming and you recognize, okay, I heard a whistle. Uh, so a dolphin must be around. And, uh, but that's a waterproof. Yeah, don't don't ruin uh, your phones if they're not waterproof. All right, and uh, that's it. That's the end of my presentation. Does do you have questions? Does anybody want to ask me anything? Uh, thank you so much. This was super interesting. <laughs> Definitely learned a lot. We talked a little bit. Uh, about dolphins and how smart they are with students before, but we didn't know about the languages and how people actually study those. Yeah, we, uh, that's how I did my, uh, I wrote my computer program to analyze the whistles and to start counting the whistles. And uh, I try to focus on counting the whistles and trying to figure out if the dolphins are smart by guessing, like what I do is I look at these numbers that I showed you so the, the top five whistles, for example, these ones. And I say, okay, this one is the most popular whistle and these are less popular. So it's not like whistle, dolphins are just randomly making whistles because they're dumb. They're not like, a, they're not like a, a rubber duck just making random sounds. They have a certain pattern in the whistles that they're making. And I figure out, okay, so they must be smarter than just a rubber duck. And I figured that out by counting the whistles. Uh, were you able to identify which whistle corresponds to what meaning or well, what no. they want to say? No, I don't, I cannot, I, nobody can figure out what it means yet when they see the whistles. Um, uh, some people are, what they're trying to do is trying to figure it out by recording at the same time sound and video. So they're trying to record the dolphin whistling and at the same time record a video of the dolphin uh, to see what it does. And by analyzing the video and the sound at the same time, they can do something like, oh, I heard the dolphin made this kind of whistle and then it gave this small piece of grass to its baby. So maybe this whistle means, hey, come eat. So uh, uh, some scientists are trying to do that, combine the sound with the video to try to understand what the dolphins are whistling. 
This is super amazing and very promising too. I, I, I'm sure as we collect more data, we will definitely learn more about it. I see a lot of people say they need to go because for some of them it's past midnight. No. People, you know, come to listen to you from all over the globe. <laughs> So let, let, let's uh, wrap it up. But thank you so much for coming. Thank you. And- thank you. I loved it. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Was super interesting. Bye. All right. I'm going to wish you all a good so weekend. Much. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye, Julie. Thanks a lot for coming. You're welcome. Thank You're welcome. you.